Yo guys, what's going on? It is me, KLV, and in today's video, I want to talk about five ways on how you can rank up in Rainbow Six Siege for the new season. So, if you see on my main account, I am currently 4,549 champ, 1.6 KD with a 1.2 win loss, decent. And on my smurf, I'm currently Diamond 1, 1.5 KD with a 1.2 ranked win loss. I'm going to get that to uh, champ by tomorrow, what is going to be Friday. So, here is five ways on how you can rank up in Rainbow Six Siege the most efficient way possible so you can get that nice charm for next season so first tip this is probably the most important tip here is this five stacking five stacking is so so much better than playing solo queue or duo queuing or even trio queuing four four stack having four people not bad but having five people is just the best because you have communication you have hopefully the people that you play with actually know how to set up site and the most important one like i said earlier communication communication is key if you know where the enemy and your team is all giving call outs and you know where they are you have the upper advantage you have the advantage so a lot of the times recently on my smurf i've been playing a lot of valk and uh, valk is very important because if someone dies they can sit on your valk camps and if you have decent valk camp spots that is huge that is just huge and with me, there's kind of a couple, there's people that I don't play with and I'm going to go with. So people with big egos. I don't like people with big egos because they just get really cocky and just think that they're better than everyone. With me, when I play Siege, right, if you're bad at the game, let's say you don't frag, but you're still, you're playing Bandit. You're banditing walls, let's say Clubhouse, you're banditing CC wall, yeah? You're reinforcing, you're giving call outs. I don't mind. Not everyone is a fragger on Siege. And... Um, I, I have no problem with that. If you're giving call outs, you're giving, you're reinforcing sites, you're, you're doing your job as whatever operator you are, I have no problem. Now, if you're, for example, one kid I played with, played with quite a while ago, he was playing Warden and he would just sit on defense, he would just sit inside, not reinforce, not getting hatches. Now, if you're Warden, your ability doesn't really, isn't used till the actual round starts. So, as a Warden or a Legion or an Azami, Majority of times you're going to be doing the hatch because your either ability to have cooldown and you have to you have to wait for it to charge up, or your ability doesn't actually work. Warden doesn't actually work until the rounds actually started. So you should be getting hatches. No, this kid didn't get hatches. He didn't reinforce, and that is just really annoying. And didn't give him call, didn't give any call out. So when I'm five stacking, it doesn't matter what rank you are. If you're giving call outs, you're you're playing sight, you're reinforcing. Your, that to me is, isn't bad but then if you're playing literally not reinforcing playing fragger ops when you can't get no kills and then not actually doing your job now that kind of annoys me and i don't play with people like that but yeah people with big egos i don't like them they think they're just better than everyone and this kind of puts the team down if they just keep insulting everyone all the time puts the team down and as well you gotta have good vibes with your team if you can have a laugh have fun as well but then also can still win rounds consistently that is in my for example the stack that i'm currently in really good stack i enjoy playing with them we have laughs and we win consistently and we all set up site obviously we don't win all the time we do lose because he is again people that is better there's always going to be someone that's better than you or it's just going to be siege just like getting unlucky warbang or just the head hit box that's not working just stuff like that very simple uh, the second tip is learn how to play off your team now what I mean by this, this is going to kind of carry over with the five stack is if someone is saying oh I need help, go to that teammate that needs help if you, well, if you can go to them anyway, try and help that teammate or if there's one person, let's go, let's say coastline, there's one person in hookah, you're on cool vibes and there's someone saying that there's a uh, hookah balcony right, the person playing cool vibes if you can try and get the refrag let's say your teammate dies in hookah and get the refrag then that's just that's a lot better. Try and play off your team as much as possible. Not baiting them, but try and play off them, if you know what I mean. Um, try and make sure you're at the same level with bodies. So let's say your teammate dies, then it's 4v4. Yeah? So it's not 5v4, it's now 4v4. Try and try and get the refrag as much as you possibly can. And then when your team is dead, teammate's dead, make sure they're given call outs to actually help out. I like if they're on cams and stuff like that that's why valkyrie is a huge player same with mozzie as well there's a huge huge advantage now third tip is don't be throwing bodies now 
I was playing with this guy a while ago. We was on a stadium Bravo. We was in kitchen and we we're on defense and uh, this guy was dead. He's of course MNK player and has an ego and thinks he's better than everyone. Like every MNK player does because they use MNK and they think they're better than everyone, even though they're fucking they're cheating. But let's move on to that. He was like, oh, what? push him, push him. Why, why are you all scared of him? Now, one, we're defense, okay? We have the biggest advantage ever, and that is called the time. We have time on our side where it's huge as a defender, okay? Uh, there's no point pushing him because I'm going to throw an Osa clip of me on Osa, playing Osa in, on Chalet. It was a 1v5, and then it went down to me winning because three of them ran out to try and kill me and then I just I killed him and then it's down to a 1v2 don't be rushing especially on defense anyway if you're a defender just hold your angles if there's not much time just hold your angles that he's either having to plant or he's having to kill you he's going to probably try and fake plant a couple of times and but when he's fake planting fake going to him if, he, if you're a, th a three armor for example let's say doc for example then he's gonna hear, he's gonna hear you you're very loud if you just rush up to him but then go back so he can't actually see you he's gonna stop the plant most likely because he hears you pushing him so if he's fake planting you you fake walk to you fake go to him or just play time you're a, you're a defender it's you'll have so much time on defense now if you're an attacker as well if you've got the bomb down don't just be rushing everything don't be like trying to get the kill just hold a diffuser. Get a drone on the diffuser. Get if one of your teammates dead. Most likely one of your teammates are dead anyway. When by the time you got diffuser down, it's very unlikely that you got five people alive when diffuser's down. Is just have that drone there, and then when it's diffusing, just get one of your teammates to say that it's diffusing. Then it's off diffuse. Something like that. It's very very simple. Don't be throwing bodies. There's no point. Spawn peaking in overtime as well on the like last round. That kind of yeah. Shouldn't be doing that. Uh, four is learn your maps. Now, what I mean by learning maps is learning the callouts, learning how to set up sites, learning how to actually play sites, and learning how to attack sites. And basically, if you know how to play the site, reinforce the site, know the callouts, and your fire stack is that's a very strong map, you shouldn't be losing. And now you're only going to be losing if you're throwing bodies and your teammate's not calling out. So you need to learn the maps. Learning the maps is very, very important with, again, callouts, knowing what operators to pick. It's a very simple tip. Just learn the maps. Now, what you can do this by is watching pro players. Obviously, they're pros for a reason. Watching the pro league that they do, and they do some nice angles. Watching other YouTubers as well with tips and their size setups. Very, very simple tip. Uh, fifth one, my second most important tip, is warm up before you play ranked now i know it's the end of the season so no one really cares about their rank but the amount of times yesterday when i was streaming by the way at klv underscore seven on twitch go drop me a follow uh the amount of people that literally join my lfg post because i do lfg posts on xbox i also do have a discord as well so if you do want to put join that is in the description down below uh i do have lfg posts on there as well but basically the amount of times i created a post they joined the post that means they was looking for the post but then said oh this isn't going to be my first game on i've just woken up do a t-hunt do what i do is i go into a t-hunt go then go into a death match and then try and get a roughly about 30 kills now obviously when the free throw mode comes out i'm going to be playing the free throw mode but i try and get about 30 kills for three games and then i'm like okay my aim is quite solid my aim is quite solid but just warm up, do a T-Hunt, I do a Disarm Bomb or Elimination, and then I jump into Deathmatch. Just warm up. It is very, very simple. Very simple, man. Warm up before you play ranked. Because otherwise, you're just going to be letting your team down. Unless you're actually reinforcing the sites and everything. But well, not many people do that. So, make sure you do warm up before you start playing. But yeah. If you did enjoy this video make sure you drop a like and subscribe it helps me out a lot and comment down below any more tips that you think are useful as well